Mikhail Gorbachev and his signature birthmark used to be all over the news. But what's the final leader of the Soviet Union doing these days? Here's what happened to Gorbachev. During the Cold War, the seemingly endless detente between the United States and its allies, led by American President Ronald Reagan, and the communist bloc, dominated and dictated by the Soviet Union, that vast country's leader Mikhail Gorbachev, was something of a boogeyman. Nuclear war was a persistent, looming threat, and the USSR was the evil empire, according to Reagan, with Gorbachev an avatar of the menace posed by the country. But then, thanks in large part to Gorbachev taking the reins of a Soviet economic and social restructuring plan called Perestroika, he opened up himself, his government, and the USSR to the West. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Then, in 1991, Gorbachev found himself out of a job when his policies led to the end of communism in Europe and the complete dismantling of the Soviet Union. Once a major newsmaker, Gorbachev was soon just a distant memory for most Americans. So, what's he busied himself with since then? Here's what the major world leader has been up to since the fall of the Iron Curtain. Gorbachev made three international trips in rapid succession after leaving office on Christmas Day in 1991. Following popular engagements in Germany and Japan, Gorbachev headed to the U.S. in May of 1992, embarking on a 13-day, seven-city tour of the United States. The trip was suggested by his former counterpart and adversary-turned-friend, ex-U.S. President Ronald Reagan. Along with his wife and daughter, Gorbachev visited Reagan at his ranch in California, then departed for Fulton, Missouri, to deliver a speech at the site where Winston Churchill coined the term Iron Curtain to describe Soviet and communism influence on Europe in a 1946 address. An Iron Curtain has descended across the continent. Gorbachev's visit to the U.S. was well received. At a stop in California, 4,000 people paid $40 for the privilege of hearing the former Soviet Union leader speak, according to the New York Times, putting Gorbachev's team on his way toward raising $3 million for the estimated startup costs needed to create a foundation. Barely a few months after stepping down as president in the last days of the Soviet Union, Gorbachev had already lined up his next professional pursuit, writing. In February 1992, the New York Times announced that Gorbachev would compose a series of political commentary columns reflecting on Russian international relations, the state of communism, and the Persian Gulf War. Initially created for an Italian newspaper, the Times syndicated the column outside of Europe, a service it provided to Gorbachev again when he resumed his long dormant feature in 2007. The former statesman has also produced and co-authored many long-form works, translated into other languages and published around the world. In 1996, Gorbachev wrote his first collection, Memoirs, followed by the reflective Gorbachev on my country and the world three years later. In 2016, Gorbachev released The New Russia, followed by 2020's What is at Stake Now? My Appeal for Peace and Freedom. After five years of giving lectures about politics and writing about his life and accomplishments at the world's highest levels, Gorbachev felt the itch to get back into the game. According to the Washington Post, Gorbachev publicly floated the idea of a political comeback in mid-1993, before ultimately announcing his intention to enter the race for the Russian presidency in March 1996. In the lead-up to the expected announcement, Gorbachev's name was included in politician popularity and presidential hopeful polls, but less than 1% of respondents said they liked Gorbachev enough to vote for him. The former president chalked that up not to lingering feelings over the collapse of the Soviet Union, but as evidence of a secret plot to keep him down, attesting that he was truly popular with the people of Russia, who would carry him to a victory in the election late that year. Gorbachev ran on a platform of being a leader of a democratic coalition, a third choice to the government of incumbent Boris Yeltsin, or a return to communism. It didn't work. At all. Yeltsin cruised to re-election, with Gorbachev receiving just 350,000 votes of the 70 million cast, 0.5% of the electorate, and in seventh place out of 10 candidates. Apparently undeterred by his monumental defeat in the 1996 Russian presidential election, Gorbachev made another attempted at re-entry into national politics in the early 2000s. 
he re-established the Social Democratic Party of Russia, a political party whose history goes back to an 1898 movement that gained some traction and influence in Russia before the Bolshevik Revolution and the creation of the Soviet Union. Operating throughout Russia under Gorbachev's command, the new Social Democratic Party flopped, securing a grand total of zero seats in the lower house of Russia's parliament. In 2004, Gorbachev resigned from his party leadership post following a disagreement with the SDP chairman, who wanted to align with the Vladimir Putin supporting United Russia Party, which the former president was against. The Social Democratic Party of Russia was so unsuccessful that it was banned from existence by the government. It was in violation of a law requiring a party to create local offices in the majority of Russian areas, so it was forcefully dissolved in early 2007. In Russia, Mikhail Gorbachev is widely blamed for sending the country into political and social chaos when he helped facilitate the end of the Soviet Union. In non-communist Western Europe and the United States, he's respected and held up as a hero for much the same reason. This adoration was on full display in April 2011 at the star-studded 80th birthday celebration of the last leader of the USSR. According to The Atlantic, a crowd of 4,000 well-wishers gathered at London's classy Royal Albert Hall to pay tribute to Gorbachev, including movie stars like Sharon Stone and Kevin Spacey, paying between $300,000 and $160,000 for tickets, with proceeds going to charity. Contribution to the development of culture of an open world A variety of musical acts performed, including Paul Anka, Shirley Bassey, and German hard rock band Scorpions doing Wind of Change, their 1990 hit about the fall of communism. President Bill Clinton, Bono, and Sting all sent in video messages, as did Arnold Schwarzenegger, who called Gorbachev his hero. Ted Turner even labeled the ex-president the man of the century. In 1997, Gorbachev starred in a commercial for Pizza Hut after turning down several other endorsement proposals. He told the New York Times, I thought that it is a people's matter, food. This is why, if my name works for the benefit of consumers, to hell with it. He reportedly earned close to $1 million for the spot, which he funneled into his research foundation. The ad ran in many international markets, but never in Russia. Gorbachev's print ad work is more robust and varied than his TV commercial work. In 1994, according to Ad Age, his image dominated a magazine ad for Apple Computer as part of its Think Different campaign, in which the anti-PC aligned itself with historical iconoclasts, Gorbachev was held up as a rebel because of his Soviet Union reforms. In 2007, Gorbachev returned to advertising, appearing in a print campaign for luxury goods maker Louis Vuitton. In 2009, ten years after the death of his wife, Raiza, Mikhail Gorbachev remembered her in a way that was unique for a statesman and politician. He cut an album of Russian standards and romantic ballads. According to NME, songs for Raiza included seven songs that were some of his late wife's favorites. The album was unveiled at a charity auction held in London, set to benefit a charity tied to the album's inspiration, the Raisa Gorbachev Foundation. To whet the appetite of the 350 assembled bidders, a crowd of wealthy and prominent individuals which included Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling and Sarah Brown, wife of UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown, Gorbachev performed one of the songs on the album, Old Letters, live. The album has never been widely or commercially released. According to the Washington Post, the presence and high visibility of Raisa Gorbachev was unusual for that place and time. Taking on a role more akin to that of an American presidential spouse, Raisa accompanied her husband on foreign visits and advised him on important political matters, both of which earned criticism in the 1980s. A de facto diplomat for the Soviet Union in its final years, and an active partner both in life and work, Raisa's death in September 1999 was devastating to Mikhail. After a diagnosis of a rare and severe type of leukemia, Raisa Gorbachev received treatment at a German hospital, but it was unsuccessful, and she sadly died at age 67. Her body was flown back to Russia and buried in a prestigious cemetery in Moscow. According to William Taubman's Gorbachev, His Life and Times, the couple's adult daughter, Irina, moved in with her father after her mother's death. Not allowing him to live alone, Irina also brought along her two daughters. 
In 1993, Gorbachev used his experience and skills in organizing people and perpetuating ideas in a non-geopolitical fashion, forming the Green Cross International. Inspired by the environmental action encouraging Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit in 1992, Gorbachev created the think tank to spread awareness of and advocate for cleaner water, pollution eradication, renewable and alternative energy, and providing medical care for those suffering health problems as the result of pollution exposure. Острый. И так многое придётся менять, чтобы вписаться в новые требования, особенно вытекающие из того, что вот планета в опасности, по сути дела. The non-profit A Political Foundation operates chapters in the United States, Italy, Poland, and Switzerland, among other nations, with a membership of 13 million people. In 2016, Gorbachev resigned his position as president of the Green Cross, ceding the role to Jean-Michel Cousteau, son of oceanographer and filmmaker Jacques Cousteau. A year later, Gorbachev resigned from the board of directors and renounced his title of founding president after the group faced what he called virtual insolvency when some local chapters failed to pay dues, which he said reeked of an attempt of aggressively hostile takeover. Banking on and expanding on the diplomacy and open flow of ideas that won him the 1990 Nobel Peace Prize, Gorbachev established the World Political Forum in 2003. Gorbachev endeavored to create a place for scientists, politicians, and religious leaders from various geographic and cultural backgrounds to connect with one another and discuss and analyze critical, interconnected issues. In 2006, Gorbachev opened an international seminar for the World Political Forum with a speech about the role of media responsibility in the encroaching age in which technology and information were rapidly expanding in both possibility and influence. With similar aims in mind, Gorbachev chaired the World Summit of Nobel Peace Laureates, an exclusive club, it's a consortium of globe-changing individuals who, like Gorbachev, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Gorbachev spoke at the organization's 2012 event, alongside 19 other laureates from 17 nations, including President Barack Obama. Born in 1931, Mikhail Gorbachev was 60 years old when his tenure as the man atop the Soviet Union ended in 1991. He wasn't a young man then, and as he's aged into his 90s, he's understandably suffered a number of the major health issues. According to the Associated Press, Gorbachev had surgery in Germany in 2006 to repair his carotid artery, the main channel of blood to the brain, 10 days after checking himself in because he felt abnormally tired and canceled a slew of international engagements. In 2011, according to UPI, Gorbachev endured a two-hour spinal surgery at a hospital in Munich, Germany, just weeks after celebrating his 80th birthday. He recovered, but in 2014, he was back in Germany receiving treatment for what he told Russian News Service was a disease recurrence. Gorbachev reportedly has a very serious variety of diabetes. And for NDTV, at 88 years old, Gorbachev was briefly hospitalized in Moscow for pneumonia. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about historical figures are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.